And since uh, with the next delegation, the uh, open state night on the uh, regional water service business plan and uh, rates development, we will also be dealing with report number four, which is on the same topic. So I would like a motion to receive, first of all, the delegation, and then maybe a motion to receive all of the reports. Thank you. Yes. All in favor, thank you. Okay. Um, I, okay. Uh, Mr. Shoji, would you, would you care to introduce? Do, introduce or? Yeah, I'd just like to do a quick introduction uh, into uh, the presentation and the report. I just want to introduce uh, Peter Hutchins and Gurji Sanga from Opus Data Night. They're the engineering consultants that uh, uh, developed the Comprehensive Regional Water Plan that was adopted in June. And this is part of the same project. It's um, looking at the rate structures needed to uh, adequately fund our operations as well as uh, some of the um, initiatives in the Comprehensive Regional Water Plan. And this is uh, the first comprehensive rate review that uh, we had done um, on the regional water system for at least 10 years. So we're def definitely due for the rate review. And um, yeah, that's uh, the introduction. And at the end of the presentation, there are uh, a few recommendations in the report. Thank you, Mr. Shoji. Um, I guess the question is, would you want to take questions during the presentation or wait till the end? Um, I think yeah, either would be okay with us. Uh, if, if you feel that you have questions, feel free to ask during the presentation. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'd just like to thank the board for allowing us to make this presentation in front of you today. Um, so this is a continuation of our last discussion, which was a comprehensive regional water plan. So just a quick agenda. We'll talk a bit about the background. Uh, we'll talk about the business plan itself some of the rates development, um, and some of the scenarios that we looked at in developing your rates. And we'll talk about some con conclusions and um, we'll open up for further questioning at the end. So background to the Comprehensive Regional Water Plan. So this was an update to the 2002 plan, which was a 10-year water works development plan and stage one systems master plans. The plan itself assessed the current state of the regional water system and looked at deficiencies, existing deficiencies within the, within the water system, and then looked at the future and projected water demands for your system and looked at subsequent deficiencies and upgrades required to meet those um, requirements for the next 25 years. And we provided recommendations on how those needs would be met. And one of the things that we talked about in the, in the comprehensive regional plan is the concept of intensive demand management. And the intensive demand management strategy was approved by the board uh, earlier this year. So this plan here today is uh, in relation to the intensive demand management strategy. And just a note on the development cost charges. So we are in process of revising some of the development cost charges, and that's to be completed in 20, 2014. So the business plan itself, um, the key to the business plan is the sustainability aspects to meet financial needs for the district until 2036. And the demand itself will incorporate the intensive demand management investment schedule. As Brian mentioned, the last plan was updated about 10 years ago, and this is a comprehensive update, um, and we will talk a bit more about that. So the existing system, in this slide, we wanted just to point out the total value of your water system. So the total value is estimated at about $143 million and there's a bunch of different components within your system. There's linear assets, which is on the left-hand side of the slide, and then there's point infrastructure, which is on the right-hand side. It's about $92 million in pipe network within the regional district. Yes. No, there's not. 
infrastructure itself, yes. Next slide. The plan also includes um, discussion about asset management. And so asset management would include rehabilitation of existing assets. And how do you rehabilitate your existing assets and account for that in your budgets? So historically, the district has spent about $864,000 in rehabilitation of existing assets. What the plan is projecting is about $1.2 to $1.3 million annually to rehabilitate assets. And so rehabilitation of assets, this would be rehabilitation of existing assets. Next slide. No, just push button. So what we found in, in our review is there's, there's about a $5 million backlog. And so when we review rehabilitation, we look at the design life of your existing infrastructure. So there are infrastructure that have exceeded the current design standard, the design life of its particular use, in which case it's considered up for renewal and would be considered part of the backlog. When we did the initial review, I'll get to you. Dr. Schroeder. When we did our initial review, we found about a $5 million backlog in rehabilitation of existing assets. And that is part of the, your existing plan or your plan to go forward uh, would include rehabilitation of that backlog and then management of the rest of your system. Director Sugar, then Director Turnbull. Yeah, so um, the average of 864000 is annual. Yes. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, that backlog caught my attention in the, in the report. And I'm just wondering what, what kind of infrastructure you're talking about and how, um, how vulnerable is that infrastructure that's in the backlog to fail or be compromised in some way? How urgent is that issue, I guess? So, so part of the, um, the ways of managing a utility is to look at breakage, failures. Um, so the exercise that we're talking about today is, is really a holistic view on your system. What we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at design life of particular assets. And this is a very high level review. So we're not looking specifically at a block to block basis. So we couldn't look, we're not looking at the risk of a particular water main failing in this case. Uh, what we are looking at is if you've exceeded the design life, the theoretical design life of an asset, it would be considered part of your backlog. And that's a way to do financial review of your assets and the requirements of your funding needs going forward. Um, there are some backlog, there is a backlog within your district the question of prioritizing the backlog would be something that we'd have to look at specifically and something that the district would look at specifically. And it's, and it's, a, and it's a number of different utilities. It's pipelines. Um, it could be some pump stations. Um, and I, I don't have the specifics of, of the specific facilities to talk about today. It, a backlog is, I mean, it's, it's always, there always will be a backlog. You're just going to prioritize it and pick away at it, right? I mean, you're, you've always got something knocked off the bottom of the list and something new that goes to the top. Is that correct? Or is this, is this $5 million worth of backlog a reasonable expectation for um, infrastructure of our size and type? I think the, the concept of asset management is something that's being um, adopted within the last few years by many municipalities uh, within Canada, um, within North America. Uh, I think this, this issue with backlog is not new. Uh, it, is, it is a concept that's being reviewed by many municipalities, um, and it's not new. I don't think it's something new or surprising to us that you would have a backlog in the, some of your asset infrastructures. Um, to say it's unusual, I wouldn't consider it unusual. To say that you need to address it, I would say yes, you probably do need to address it. And um, we're not suggesting that you do $5 million worth of work in one year. We're just 
pointing out that there is a concern and issue that will take time to, to deal with. Um, Director Chermel, I'm going to go to Mr. Shoji. I think he had a comment on this point, and then you. Um, yeah, actually, I think Guruji did a, a good job answering the question. Um, I just wanted to highlight that, note that that is a theoretical uh, backlog. It's based on our, we were very fortunate that we have an asset inventory, and uh, we've done the asset inventory, um, and that's based on the projected design life and it may not necessarily be the acts based on condition. And the next stage of an asset management plan is to do the condition assessments, which would fine tune that $5 million. You know, it may not be exactly 5 million in year one, as Gurji said. So the next step is to do the condition assessments to determine exactly when that asset should be scheduled to be replaced. Director Turnbull. Um, my point is not exactly the same. It, it's also related to the backlog though and the items that have been um, brought up in the past related to backlog and that would be there's some existing uh, infrastructure in Grantham. So I, I guess it's more, Mr. Chair, the priorities as set out in the schedule and then the accompanying request for a rise in water rates. I would need to understand how that would be beneficial to those people in my area which receive water from a different source. There's some Somes and Granthams backlog. I don't believe there's Langda backlog, but that's been an issue. So there's there's backlog and I, I need to know the details and I would not, Mr. Chair, be prepared to um, consider the motion that we have at the beginning of the staff report about raising the water rates until there's more consultation in my area about this backlog. Thanks. Okay, I think we'll, we'll deal with that at the time of the motion. Okay, and um, I don't see any for the question, but I have a question. <clears throat> it's $5 million on an infrastructure of some 150, so that it's around 3% of the asset base that requires replacement. How do we stand in, in general as far as uh, backlogs in other jurisdictions? And also, um, in your experience, in water systems, I do understand that uh, generally the backlog um, is is climbing. There's an infra infrastructure deficit in Canada, so I would just like a, a general comment in that regard. So, the, yeah, the main, one of the main drivers and issues for municipalities and NBCs is is the concept of asset management. I, I think. If you look historically at some of the utilities, um, it was not a holistic view on remaining service life of assets um, and then the fund replacement of those assets. It's a, it's a new concept. Um, and I think it's, it's a concept to promote sustainability of the utility itself. Our company itself, Opus Date and Night, we're, we're actually fund, um, our head office is in New Zealand. So the government of New Zealand came close to bankruptcy uh, in the early 80s and developed and started to really promote asset management within the country because of this issue of, of financial difficulties and being unable to fund replacement of infrastructure. If you look at other countries such as New Zealand, it's, it's actually quite advanced of asset management. It's actually mandated um, nationally on utilities to make sure that they are financially sustainable. And I think that's the concept that you see coming forward in BC with PSAP. Um, with regards to, the, to your particular backlog of $5 million, the thing about Sunshine Coast is your water utility is quite unique. You have a very long, narrow network the cost of your utility is quite high. And that's just because you're spread out. Um, so you have an unusual utility. I, so it's difficult to compare your utility to another utility, such as the city of Surrey or a uh, more compact type of a network. So it's, I don't think it's fair to do that type of a comparison. If you look at the $5 million, and if it was actually uh, of surprise to us, I don't believe it was a surprise to us and to probably a lot of uh, 
the people that are working on this project. There are some areas that we're looking at in terms of the backlog. Uh, we are actually refining some of uh, the assets that we've included uh, within the report. I think there's one reservoir that's included that we have to review to see if it's considered backlog or not. But I don't think there's anything surprising within the numbers themselves. So I'll pass this on to Peter. The second part of the business plan required looking at the intensive demand management investments that were approved back in June. These include expansion of the water treatment plant, um, Chapman distribution system upgrades, and various other components. For the purposes of this, of this analysis, all investments that were less than fifty, less than five hundred thousand dollars, were assumed to be funded through parcel tax and industry revenues and reserves. For capital investments over five hundred thousand dollars, this analysis assumed that there would be loans taken out to fund these initiatives. An estimate of DCC funding contributions was made to offset the cost of these capital investments. And these will have to be refined when the, de uh, when the development cost charges are reviewed in 2014. The total business plan is summarized in the projected expenses shown here. The blue bars at the top reflect the rehabilitation requirements for regional water service. The orange and red reflect the interest and principal payments associated with the loans required for the intensive demand management program, as well as funding certain rehabilitation, rehabilitation of assets that are above the $1.2 million average. The total operating costs are summarized in the green at the bottom. We reviewed the historical operating expenses in terms of administration, operating, maintenance, and utility and consumables and use that as a basis to project those costs forward. Yes. So in The historical, the historical rehabilitation was based on the average $300,000 rehabilitation of water mains, as well as certain point assets that were identified as going through betterment in the last five years. And that formed the analysis to the left of this dashed line of historical expenses. We estimated that the rehabilitation expenditures in 2013 were around $500,000. And the remainder of that backlog, that $5 million, we've assumed to be taken out as $1 million loans over the next five years to fund some sort of asset management and rehabilitation strategy to address that backlog. And so that... Yes. So that $5 million backlog cost is shown here in the principal payments and in interest payments. These little purple or brown points here are the additional intensive demand management investments that do not require funding. So those are the ones that are less than $500,000 that are funded through parcel taxes and user fees and reserves. Director Sure. Thank you. Just following up on Director Trimble's question, why is there the dip in 2012 and 13? Like what accounts for not doing any or very much work? I don't understand that part. It's not necessarily the dip in 2012, it's the increase in 2013. There was a reservoir rehabilitation that was, that was undertaken in 2011 that caused that spike. Yes. So it's not the deficit here, it was the, 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 the year before increase.
Okay, Director Segers. So just a quick question on this uh, chart here. We don't actually have this in our package, right? This is the, is it a pictorial representation of section three in the report? Yes, it's total, it's total expenses, yes. Right, so that's, so section three in the report is funding sources. And so you've actually taken that and put it up here, is that correct? Let me just review the report so I know which section you're referring to. It's actually a section on, 2.5 is the total cash flow projection. Okay. Okay, thank you. And it's a summary of 2.3.2 is the total expenditures. The challenges that were discovered in the, the development of this business plan is that about $175 million is required between 2013 and 2036 to fund $95 million in operating expenses and $80 million in rehabilitation and capital, rehabilitation and investments in capital assets. The second challenge is to move towards an equitable cost of revenue allocation, as I'll discuss on the following slide. The methodology of the cost and revenue allocation is based on the principle of two accounts. The first account being the parcel tax account and the second account being the user fee account. The expenditures for the parcel tax account are assumed to be the capital expenditures or the rehabilitation and IDM investment costs. And the user fee account expenditures are your operating costs, which are your administration, operating, cost of utility and consumables. The revenues from land charges are to fund the parcel tax account, so thereby land charges are funding your rehabilitation and capital programs. And your utility bills are funding your operating costs. So this methodology was used in the development of the, uh, of the rates. So the purpose of the rate development was to recommend the required, recommend the required parcel tax user fees and ICI metered rates to recover revenues in line with that SCRD methodology. To do this, we analyze various future scenarios facing the regional water service. The first scenario, oh, sorry. Sorry, what does ICI stand for? Industrial, commercial, and institutional. The first scenario, assumed a 2% population and parcel growth rate. This was the growth that was assumed for the, to, to estimate the future water demands of the regional water service. And that led to the, the development of the intensive demand management schedule. If you assume a 2% population and parcel growth rate though to determine your rates, what you have is an increase in your tax base. Compounded 2% per year. So your, under this scenario, the parcel taxes started at 244 and are reduced to 220. That is because of the increase in the tax base. The increase you see in the user fees from 215 to 316, that's the result of moving towards that equitable cost allocation. So user fees have to cover $95 million in the future and parcel taxes have to cover $80 million in the future. And so this, the change here is to meet that actual cost allocation. Okay. Assuming that it's gonna be 2%, which we've been wrong about before, right? Correct. So it's really a forecast. So for the purposes of the setting rates, <laughs> it's more conservative to assume a lower population and parcel growth rate of say 0.5%, which is slightly less than the projected average from BC stats for the Pension Coast Regional District. In this case, your parcel tax base isn't as high as a 2% growth rate, and you go up to from 244 to 266 by the year 2020. And again, your user fees have to increase from 215 to 318 by 2020 to move towards an equitable cost allocation. 
as I put it earlier, there was $95 million worth of operating expenses. So what's the impact to the required rates if you see a 1% increase in operating expenses? A 1% increase in operating expenses equates to about $11 million over the time frame of this modeling period. So your, your user fees have to increase further from 316 to $357 in 2020 to cover those additional operating expenses. Under scenario four, we looked at what would happen if the required rates were met in the year 2017. So they're met three years earlier. The result is lower rates. However, you must meet those rates faster. So, so parcel tax and user fees would increase at a faster rate. The risk here is that you might, you have a shorter time period to adjust those rates over to adjust for changes in the projections. If you push out your required rate period to say 2024, you are moving revenues you need to fund your system to a later date and you might run into deficits. So it's important to find a balance between that rate increase and the year in which you want to meet your required rates. Say one thing. So one of the things that we're saying with these slides is your utilities underfunded. And it will take time for us to bridge the gap. So in the previous scenarios, we're saying to, to actually adequately fund your utility, we'd wait till 2020. And in this slide, what we're saying is, okay, so if we actually fund your utility at its adequate levels by 2017, what is the impact? So, so the point is, is it will take time for us to come up with, with the number to adequately fund your utility. And that's what's happening in a lot of these slides. That's why you see significant increases for the first number of years. It's to bridge the gap to make your utility so it's properly funded. The findings of these scenarios is that revenues must increase if the future required level of service is to be maintained. That parcel tax, parcel taxes are currently subsidizing user fees. Therefore, user fees must increase at a faster rate than parcel taxes to transition to an equitable recovery of revenues. Importantly, changes to operating expenses have a significant impact on the required rates, and the SCRD must borrow to fund some of the future rehabilitation requirements. Creating these scenarios and findings, we recommend that a conservative underestimate approach be taken when estimating the growth of the regional water service area to ensure that utility is financially sustainable, that the required rates are reviewed as the intensive development management investment schedule is refined, and that the rates are reviewed on an annual basis and adjusted accordingly for inflation. We recommend moving forward with scenario two, which recommends a zero point, which recommends using a 0.5% population and parcel growth rate and having, a rev, and having your required revenues met by the year 2020. So what this means for next year is that the total residential increase is about 4.7% for 2014. The total increase between 2012 and 2013 last year was about 4%. So the average residential rate will increase by about $22 next year, and the average quarterly ICI meter utility bill will increase by about $33 for 2014. I just want to thank the board for letting us present and open the floor for more questions. Questions? Uh, Director Schuger. Um There's a very minor difference between what is recommended by the consultants and what's in our recommendation on page 19. Why the, the shade of difference there? Mr. Schuger. Uh the These are the recommendation of the rate increases without inflation. So all, all the slides that were shown didn't include inflation amount. So um, the recommendation on page 19 includes um, our finance department said uh, to use the 
C Vancouver CPI as the inflation index, so it adds 0.7%. Director Turnbull. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I've got some questions about value and um, versus performance in my area. Um, the other one that I had also was Eastbourne, because it's my understanding that the refit of all the infrastructure is complete and that there is within that cost center, they paid for it all. So I look at the, what is it, the timetable on page page 25 will be good enough and we've got and I've also mentioned earlier the concern related to Granthams and I'm looking at the timetable here and we've got nothing happening for Eastburn until 2019 and that may be appropriate but there, we may need a groundwater investigation earlier than that so I'm, I'm looking at priorities and timing here and that until those questions are addressed Mr. Chair I would not be prepared to um, s subject those people in Area F to a higher water rate because I, I see that all of the upfront costs are related to the Chapman. The other one that I note is small systems automation of chlorination at the Solms Point well. That is a huge, huge issue in Granthams and in the rehab and the fact that that was not included as well as some pipes. So, and I've got, we've got 2018 for that. Um, so from my point of view, these are way too far in the future at the moment and will not address current issues that have been brought up quite a number of times at this table, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shoji. I just want to highlight that um, I think it's roughly 95% of our funding right now just funds operations. And um, the, the, def the, ra the re main reason for the rate increase requirements are to fund capital and to replace our existing assets. And today is kind of like day one based on the, that rate structure, but we have been replacing assets as they retire and we will continue to replace assets based on their projected service life. And so all over the whole region. And it's pretty challenging to calculate that based on area. Uh, for example, we've already replaced about 90% of Grantham's water system, and we did the Langdale Reservoir. Those are examples of replacing assets, and it's based on their expiry date. It's not based on trying to balance the books across the region. Um, and it, depending on when that infrastructure is put in the ground or whenever that pump station was built, that's gonna be the date and when those expenses have to come up and um, you can't balance that by, by area. Director Turnbull, yes. Uh, just as a follow-up, um, from my point of view, the question is which areas should subsidize which, which others. We have in our portfolio an ability to create new water services, and we have in Pender. We've got two that are not within the regional district. So from my point of view, that's part of the analysis is because what, what I see is a request from people who are not going to benefit to fund those who will. And that, from my point of view, is the very bone of contention and at what rate the Grantham's chlorination and the lack of it, the lack of automation, has been an issue from day one in the takeover of Grantham's. These are issues that have not been resolved and I'm looking at the schedule. It wouldn't be resolved under this until 2018. That's my issue, Mr. Bur Mr. Chair. Director Seegers. Thank you. So the proposal at this point is for scenario two in our package, it's on page 40. That's looking at um, rate changes up to 2020, which would bring um, the parcel tax and the user fees up and would follow the implementation that Director Turnbull has exception or has expressed exception to. The other option then could be scenario four on page 42. It means that the required rates are met by 2017, that's three years earlier, which would um, make those enhancements come earlier. So that may be 
what she may be leaning towards. Director Turnbull. Just asking to address backlog, Mr. Chair, of, of takeover of, an, of a system, and it seems to me that they are paying at a rate which ought to entitle them to a similar product. I guess we have a, a recommendation of, um, and these are regional rates, and I think that they, they do span the entire region, and I think that we do have to make a decision here, um, or we have to uh, evaluate the recommendation on page one or an alternative. So I guess uh, um, either that or the recommendation, you can propose a modification to the recommendation, Director Turner. Mr. Chair, these rates do not span the entire region. They are not the same in Pender, North or South. Those are calculated separately, and there is a separate rate. So it is not region-wide. It is called regional water, but it is not. So that is my point, and I wish to address value and what people are paying versus performance. We have spoken about this earlier. The priorities listed here, from my point of view, are not acceptable. I will not be voting for this water rate increase because I believe that there are people in my area who are not getting value for their money already. Mr. Shoji. Uh, just comparing rates between the three service areas, regional water is the lowest rate and, um, and it is based on scale. Um, the general, generally the smaller the system if you try to fund that system in isolation, the higher the rate is gonna be. And uh, based on the recommendations going forward for all of our rates, uh, I have the numbers here. North Pender, based on a 7% increase, which is coming forward later today. Uh, the average residential um, water bill will be about $500. South Pender is gonna be about 625. And regional water with the recommendation built in Right here will be 40, 481. So, uh, regional water does benefit from economy of scale. Director Seegers. Um, I understand Director's Turnbull, Director Turnbull's um, considerations, and I'm willing to make the recommendation on page 19 that we move forward with uh, the water rate increase and the financial plan be adjusted as indicated. Do I have a seconder? I have a seconder? Any further discussion? Director Tredick. Yeah, it's, it's not really to do with the motion directly other than the town of Gibson's has a bulk water rate and I'm not quite sure how this would apply. I, I tried to understand it, but I couldn't figure it out. Mr. Shoji. Uh, this won't apply to the bulk water rate. Uh, bulk water rate is through agreement and it's based on our actual costs. And that's how it's calculated. So that'll, that'll continue to be the way it's calculated. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. Opposed? Director Turnbull. Uh, Director Turnbull is recorded. And Director Are you opposed? Lewis. Director Lewis is also opposed. And, and Mr. Chair, it's a follow up. And I look Director forward Turnbull. to um, looking into the noted backlogs that I've raised today and in the consultation that we met we're discussing this morning with people in Grantons. And I wanted to leave on the table my objection to the prior priorities in Area F versus everything else. So from my point of view, I am not finished resolving that question. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the presentation.